It's the 6-1 BC Lions in Winnipeg to take on the Blue Bombers who sit at 5-2. and two. Of course, big game here to IG Field. You know, um, the lesson for that is to understand that the better team doesn't always win. One, two, um, the better team that day wins. So it doesn't matter what the game before or who we were, you know, um, when it comes to stepping in and lining it up and proving yourselves that day. They obviously came out ready. They came out hungry. Winnipeg had something to prove. For us, you know, I kind of feel like it humbled us. The fact of the matter is on that day, the Bombers went out and basically took care of business. Nightmare is definitely a great description for sure. Um, something that I definitely want to forget and, and try to move away from as best as possible. See what Zach Caleros in the offense can do. Caleros in the end zone, throws far side. Wide open, Lawler can makes the catch at about the BC 37. The game actually started okay at, out, out at the get-go. We had some field position and had them backed up, and then they made some huge plays, and then we got down, and the you know the crowd's against you, all that. But again, goes back to number, the, one of the number one traits you can have is resiliency. Gain of 32. First and 10 for the Bombers at their own 37. Little play action. Caleros drops back. He's going to fire deep again. Wide open. Show. He catches it at the 20. 10. 5. Touchdown. Winnipeg Blue Bombers. When you let them get success early, and that momentum is now to the you know to the ceiling, and now you got the fans involved, and now they start to feel invincible, and now they're playing with a different type of confidence. Those things are hard to bounce back from. First and ten for the Bombers at their own 53. Ball in the near hash. It's Caleros is going to take a shot downfield. This is going to be Lawler. He makes the catch. Touchdown, Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You know we were on kind of on a high horse feeling like we're unstoppable, you know, uh, but to lose in that fashion and get 50 points put on us and uh, give up that many deep balls, you know, you got to go back to the lab, man. It makes you want to work that much harder to to be better because obviously it's a major mistake and we're not where we, we thought we were, so. And the Lions have been hit by a buzzsaw here yeah, in Winnipeg. Well, what did we talk about right out of the, get, right of the gate, right, is you knew they were going to come out firing. Here they come with four, a little play action. Evans rolls out to his right. Looking far side, fires, overthrows Holland's ball, goes sailing. Well, my plan was to gut it out the whole game, but it was pretty bad, and it hurt a lot more than I was trying to let people know. Um, it got to the point where I couldn't really, like, move my left side of my, like, upper body, which, like, as I was going, it was just, like, dwindling down. Like, it started hurting more than had that late interception, which was pretty much caused by not being able to move my left side. And... Uh, I just, I knew I, I was hurting the team at that point. I wasn't going to give the team the best chance to win the game. Dom Davis comes in at quarterback for the Lions now. Okay, first off, our QBs, Dom starting the second half. Game might become available. They're working with it right now. The only way VA is going in the game is that the other two guys aren't available. Just so you know what's going on with our QBs, so you're not confused about that. It was our plan from the start. Two things I know when shit's going south and it's not going your way. The one thing you can control is that individual football players go play to the best of your ability with great effort. You have 100% control over that. Go do that, number one. Okay? If I want the team members to be all in, the coaches, the players, everybody, if they're, if I want buy-in from them, I'm going to tell them um, anything I can tell them of, as to what and why. And I think it also, I just don't want people to guess as far as what's going on. So um, wanted to know the plan so they knew what was happening and what was going on and so that they can focus on their jobs and keep going forward. Four-man rush. It's going to be a little quick hitter to Oliver in the left flat. Ball comes loose. Picked up. Lacombo. 10, 5. Touchdown, BC Lions. Bo Lacombo picks up a loose football. You know, they definitely came out firing. 
We had a couple opportunities to get back in. We didn't do enough at that point, and then they buried us. So Nightmare is definitely a great description for sure, um, something that I definitely want to forget and, and try to move away from as best as possible. For whatever reason, um, the Lions didn't bring their A game. Now, you know, yeah, does it factor into the, the equation that they had, what, 11 or 13 days rest between games and the Lions? I think it played three games in that time, or this was their third game within that time frame. So it is what it is. I mean, teams have to deal with it throughout the course of the season, and the Lions just clearly didn't deal with it that day. But even still, they're, you know, we, we felt that like, we're the better team. And that day, they were just they were just a better team that day. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers have defeated the BC Lions by a score of 50 to 14. A game in which the Bombers came out flying on all cylinders. And you hope you take all these lessons of playing from the head, playing from behind, winning, losing, all those things. You hope it gets you to a point um, where you continue to grow. And as you get later in the season, you can um, you know, lean on those moments that you've been through before and on how to navigate them. All right. So the only the only lesson I would take away from this is just remember losing sucks and remember that to win games, we got to be on point and doing our thing with what you guys do 99% of the time. I wouldn't take a deep walk in the weeds on analyzing this game on what happened and all that stuff. They had a full tank of gas. They brought it, give them credit. They played better than us and that's it. That's all, all we got to say about this one. We are not meeting tomorrow. The next time we will meet is Tuesday. I talked to you about four days off, which you guys more than deserve after back-to-back -back road games. Four games off, your number one job is to get as healthy as you can and to come back with a fresh mind and a fresh body for day one on Tuesday because we got big games coming up. And a big one, we get to go back home to BC Place and play Calgary on Saturday at 4 o'clock. Sometimes you got to get a refresher. Um, you know, 18 games is a long time. And sometimes you got to take a step back, you know, and be able to reflect and be uh, able to do some self-evaluation. Some people wait for bye weeks and things like that, but sometimes, you know, when you get to add a couple extra days and things, you know, there's time to do that as well. So I think we took a reset, um, you know, evaluated things that we weren't doing well, um, as far, especially in the game previous. I think he looks fully normal to me, and you can ask him how he's doing, but he he tells me he's feeling great, thumbs up, which is good, and uh, it'd be fun to have him back and seeing him out there. Big day here at BC Place Stadium with the game and also with the big halftime ceremony where the Water Boys will be inducted into the BC Lions Wall of Fame, as will the legend himself, Wally Buono. They were a, a big part of this um, organization, building it off the field uh, when they first started. And they were the envy, not only of the CFL, but all sports teams in the country about, this is what you do to build a, a group like the Water Boys that will help boost your business and, and support you. So. You know, as you know, we uh, we do our BC Lions on tap every week, uh, our radio show, and and um, the night we brought Wally to promote that game, I think we had the most fans show up that night. Everyone wants to see Wally. He is so well deserving. He's such a legend in the CFL and with the BC Lions, obviously. And today we're inducting four gentlemen into the BC Lions Wall of Fame who had a tremendous impact on the business success of our franchise as founders of the Water Boys. The Water Boys is a business group that was started by the late Bob Ackles in 2003. All four of these gentlemen, who are known as the founders, were the first recruits. All four of our inductees have been supporters of our BC community in numerous ways. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Please join me in congratulating the newest members of the BC Lions Wall of Fame, the four founders of the Water Boys. Wally Buono is the all-time winningest coach in the history of the BC Lions and the CFL. He worked his way up the coaching ranks before finally taking the helm as head coach of the Calgary Sam Peters in 1990 where he would go on with, to win 153 games and lead the Stamps to three Grey Cup championships. But 
If that's all you were to say, you'd be missing the best part about joining the BC Lions in 2003, where it would go on to win another, yeah, you can hear it, 129 regular season games, add another two Grey Cup championships in 2006 and in 2011, where he helped engineer one of the greatest single season turnarounds in league history. So yes, you could say that Wally is the winningest coach in CFL history, but you totally missed the point. This man is more than any record or stat or nickname. He is more than the headlines or the stories. He is a man of faith, family and football. He is all of that and he is our 2023 Wall of Fame inductee, Mr. Wally Buono. Fans right now presenting Wally Buono with his Wall of Fame jacket. Please welcome BC Lions owner, Amar Doman. records of these two teams a six and two team hosting a three and five team but I think you can throw the records out the window for this one considering the fact that the Lions are coming off their worst defeat of the season 50 to 14 in Winnipeg let's go we got a lot of work to do man let's take care of business man hey it don't matter it don't matter play through everything play through anything let's inspire each other let's win this game win on three one two three what do we got to do what today feels like to me when I woke up this morning, I thought it's a great day for some good football. Yeah. Go play your ass off with your buddies for 60 minutes and let's go get this shit done. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, man. Hey, to win this game, it's going to take a lot of discipline. It's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of trust, man. We got all those things. We're built from that. All right, we come from that clock, man. Let's go. By any means. Win on three. Win on three. Win. We all we got. We all we need. Go do your thing, bro. Absolutely. Anything you need, I got you. Then. Yeah. Go do your thing, bro. Go do your thing. Yes, sir. For me, a big question is Vernon Adams Jr. coming off a two-game absence due to a knee injury. Um, they're saying that he's 100%, he's ready to go, they're not limiting anything that he can do, but man, oh man, coming off an MCL, um, and you know, having been around this game a while, having had MCL injuries myself, two to three weeks is a pretty short period of time, yeah. and that concerns me with Vernon Adams Jr. playing. Well, and again, it's one of those situations. Yeah, it was uh, my mom's birthday weekend. They were all out for her birthday. Um, I don't know, maybe a little, a little extra juice for that one. Uh, mom's in town. And it's just that energy, man. You know, the energy that mom brings. I think all of us, you know, feel it when mom's around, man. That energy, just that love and that everything. It just, it, it gives you that, that upper, you know, that upper hand to just be a better you, I guess. First and goal for the Lions at the Calgary 7. Adams, end zone, touchdown BC Lions, Keon Hatcher! No way, no way, no way, no way! If he's got any rust on him, I don't see it. Again, a perfectly thrown football from Vernon Adams. It's always you ain't got no choice to ball, but like mom's in town, bro, you have no choice to ball. You know what I'm saying? You got to turn up. Jet sweep action to Hatcher. They fake it. Not Doesn't fool it. Now they're going to throw it to Hatcher in that left flat. One man to beat. Beats him. 50. Midfield strike all the way down to the Calgary 45 before he's finally brought down by Isaac Adam. Calgary four-man front. Adams drops back. Plenty of time. Gonna go right down the middle for Hatcher. Makes the catch at about the 40, and he's brought down immediately on the play by Kobe Williams. But a huge game for the Lions. Yeah, this is just a post pattern right up the middle of the field, and Vernon Adams lays it out. 
It was basically, I had a, a, a flat route that was in man, we expected man, and uh, it was just a foot race to the pylon. So we knew, um, you know, I'll win that race against that linebacker. So I took off and uh, I was just too excited. Adams takes the snap, looks near side, wide open receiver, touchdown PC Lions! <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I know I caught it like three, four times though. And all I'm just thinking is just, please don't drop this ball because that a play like that happened to me before in college like a bit play against Notre Dame I literally caught the ball went to the ground and just the impact of the ground made the ball come out so I'm just like and I'm trying to get in the end zone you know in front of the home fans and plus get a victory so that was a big deal as well though. probably have like 12 handshakes, like, you know what I'm saying? And that's the first time that's really ever happened, you know, on the team, man. And then it's like, it's real consistent. Like you said, it's like practice ready to go, everybody ready, like team one. But it's like, we literally got like a whole minute to two minute delay because everybody's greeting each other. Like, this is what we do. Like, even both, that's the game, that's practice. So it's just like, now we're just like a thing now. So it's just like, all right, we know. Let these guys get their hands shake us out. So it, it's, it's fire to us though, so. I wanted to come back for that Winnipeg game, you know, but um, after just talking with the medical staff and everyone, the, they thought the best choice was just to really sit out one more week, maybe two more weeks. And then after we lost to Winnipeg, um, I was definitely like, Regardless of what you guys are saying, I'm I'm ready to play against Calgary and just have fun with it. And we came out firing on on all cylinders, man. We had a great game that game. Whitehead to the near side. Calgary brings five. Whitehead Adams under pressure scrambles to his left, throws end zone. Touchdown, BC Lions! Lucky Whitehead has finally cracked the end zone as he gets his first touchdown of the year. We're finally getting that chicken box. And found like you, you, you hear from the receivers, especially Dom, right? He always starts hot. He will always be like, man, I'm who the, who the next person gonna get in the chicken box, right? That's that's the end zone for people watching this. Where did that term come from? Was that you? That's, that's Dominique Rounds, man. I mean, if, if you know Dominique Rounds, it's a wild card, man. So he started with chicken box and we all just ran with it. Chicken box. Like the coop. Coop, yeah. Everybody running around in that chicken box. All right, here we go, here we go. We don't go into the tank when we lose. We don't go over the moon when we win. Okay. We're just gonna keep this thing plugging along and then keep getting better all the time. Couldn't be more proud of you, it's a huge win. All these West wins are big, the tiebreakers, all that shit. It's a huge win, you guys should be completely proud of yourselves. Okay, we got Vernon and uh, Xavius here. <laughs> Go ahead, JK. Uh, Vernon, uh, well, let's just start there. How, how did it feel to get back out there with that like, Man, it, it felt great. It felt great. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, man, I'm just so thankful, man, so blessed by God, man, just uh, allowing me to get back. You know, my injury wasn't as bad as some of the other quarterbacks around the league who I've, you know, I've been praying for every day as well. So uh, I know Vernon, um, you know, wanted to get back sooner than, um, than, than later, and uh, I just felt that him – uh, really wanted to show everyone, and you know, that he is the guy, which we we all believe he's the guy. And I, I think sometimes VA likes to show everyone that he still is the guy, which obviously we all know, but he's got to show us that he is. So I was happy for him. Thank you, Bernard. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. God bless. Go Lions. Thanks, Andy. That was. Uh... <laughs> Hey, it's the Mojo along with Julio Caravetta, another positional group night out, Julio, and you know, these have been extremely well attended. Yes. And tonight, props to the running backs and the fullbacks. They're here, Mackie, Dylan St. Pierre, Smoke yeah. myself. Quarterbacks? Yeah. Specialists? <laughs> Just, uh, I don't care if this is like eight You're months, angry about this. It's like eight months from now, they're in the Serbian that flies up. But we got some substitutes, we got yeah. Terry Williams coming in. Alexander Holland, so it should be a good night. Let's pop on side. Let's go. Take a look. Affectionately known as the Bunker, Guile Clark, one of our sponsors, Clark Woods LLP, has this little facility down here at the bottom. So you got a little simulator going on. 
Just think about what your game would look like if you had one of these things. Allie B in the house. Yeah, you tell me. Yeah. Where's Bruce? Allie B. Oh, Allie B. That's a good one there. Hit left. Hit left. I'm gonna go meat first, meat second. Get some greens, kids, eat your greens. Uh, I gotta get a little bit of everything to be honest. But carbs got a, got a game coming up. Get your carbs. Beans. Hold off the beans. You know what? I'm here. I'm not driving. Do you want your own bread? What do you want, hurt? Yeah, I'm gonna go get a salad. See, we're working on, we're working on smoking I'm dietary health. health. I don't need a salad. I'm not, I'm not working on my figure. My figure is already is already good. No salad today. Come on, baby. Money on the line. I show up every time, you know. Go get it, boy. Look who's on losing, though. First off, big thank you to our host tonight, Gile Clark from Clark Woods LLP. Give Gile a big round of applause. Also, a big thank you to Rusty Johnson, Rusty's partner. Hey. Okay. One, one. I played at University of Oregon. I played in louder stadiums, stuff like that. So obviously it's going to be a, cha a challenge, but um, we played in Winnipeg twice already. What do you see from your opponents this weekend? They have a lot of good players. You know, I know their quarterback situation, they're figuring that out, but you know, the, the returners are pain in the butt to play against. Their defense has been really good. You know, we know we're going to be in a battle again this week. There's a lot of people busting their ass out here, which is, is awesome to see. Keep it up because it pays off. And that's how we got to show up in Regina on Sunday is ready to go to work and be in business. And we got a ton of people doing it. Keep working, keep after it. And, uh, and then uh, we'll head over to Sask. My other two obser observations of the day is if you ask Brent Fred for crowd noise, he gives you fucking crowd noise. <laughs> so don't, don't mess around with that guy. The BC Lions will visit the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on Sunday night where they are monster nine and a half point favorites on the road. Mason Fine is reportedly out for two to three weeks with a hamstring injury, leaving Jake Dolagala as the presumed starter in Saskatchewan. At the end of the day, it is professional football and the reality is, is that all of these guys on the field get paid to play and you're not gonna go out and just uh, dominate guys. The reality is they were playing for their lives and uh, you know, going into Mosaic Stadium is, is, is not easy regardless who, who's throwing the football. And there's the waving of the flag. He runs off the field as the guy in the red shirt. Right foot get into it. We have an end over end kick and we're underway in Regina. Williams fields it at the 20, 25, 30. Left side and he gets walloped at the 35 yard line. As a returner, um, it's part of it. Like you sign up for the big plays and you sign up for the hits. So 
I knew I took some hits that game, but it was part of part of the game, like part of signing up for it. Seven men creeping up to the line of scrimmage. They come with five. Adams under pressure. Steps up, and he's going to be brought down. Quarterback sack, and it's a fumble. Ball is loose. We'll see who comes up with it. Saskatchewan is saying they got it, and the officials say that Saskatchewan has it. First and ten for the Riders at the BC 15. Ball on the far hash. Play action. Dolagala goes in zone. Oh, it's right at the goal line. Is it a touchdown? Yes, it is. Touchdown, Saskatchewan. Keon Schaefer Baker, just like that, the Riders lead it six to nothing. Yeah, they take advantage of that early turnover. Morrow in the backfield. Lions bring five. Dolagala looks near side. Peters almost intercepted it, stepped right in front of Emelis. And the Riders will be forced to punt. At the end of the day, for me, you got to earn my respect. So I say he definitely earned my respect, you know, with, with the way he played fearlessly and uh, tried to attack me, wasn't scared, wasn't backing down. First and 20, Dolagala drops back three in zone for the Lions. He's going to air it out, goes down the field, looking for a receiver, and it's caught at the 30-yard line. Emelis makes the catch. I was upset during the game because, you know, anytime like somebody does your celebration on you, pulls out the arrows, throw up the X, it's just like, it's kind of like disrespect, you know, you take it as disrespect in the moment. But uh, just after sitting back and just watching everything, like, I respect this game and, 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 this, and this competition, you know. Next time they came to us, they played here at home. I couldn't wait to, for the matchup. So I knew what I was going to do to them or what I was going to bring to the table. I ended up getting an interception. He comes up to me after the game, shakes my hand, says, you're a great player, you're a hell of a player. So for a guy to show that type of respect, you know, it, it means a lot. And, you know, I can only tip my hat off to that because at the end of the day, like, he made some great plays out there, whether it was a post route, whether it was him going over the top, uh, scoring a touchdown. He did a lot of great things that game to help his team win, and I can only respect somebody like that. Saskatchewan leads the Lions by a score of 24-13 to after 30 minutes of play at Mosaic Stadium in Regina. The game's not over. The game's not over. I'm a coach for the same team that I expect y'all to play with. Go bust their ass. Point blank, period. If we're the best in the league, then be that. Be that shit. Don't turn on, turn off. Be that shit. All the fucking time. We're better than that. And it ain't fucking close. And I know they can hear me. They got motherfuckers walking the hallway right now. I know they can hear me. We're going to beat their ass this second half. Let's go. Play the same, but we up first. That's all that. That's all it is. Whoop their ass. Play like that, bro. Go kick on. Here you go, man. You know, that game we had a chance to come back. We just, we dug us off the hole in the first half and then we had a great second half, but. Makes it second and 10. Ball of the BC, 46, just inside the far hash. Saskatchewan showing blitz again. Here they come with six. Adams Jr. rolls to his right, goes downfield, looks for Hollins, makes the catch, steps out of bounds at the Saskatchewan 41. What a throw. Saskatchewan, six men in the box. Here they come with three, four, five. Adams throws downfield, looking for Hollins, makes the catch at the 10 yard line. No, they're calling him out of bounds. No, he got it. Saskatchewan with six, five men of the line of scrimmage. They come with six. Adams Jr. corner, Hatcher. Touchdown, BC Lions. Oh. Keon Hatcher on 11 yard reception. So don't go anywhere yet. 31 to 19 with 10 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Do you believe in comebacks? We're gonna find out. Super wild, I saw I always have a, a crazy night there. Love playing in that environment. Oh. Saskatchewan brings the blitz, five man rush. Adams has time, he's gonna go down the middle. Wide open, lucky Whitehead. 30, 20, 10, touchdown BC Lions with flags in the backfield. Just I wanted everything to go right, especially when I seen the safety come down. I wasn't worried about no one guarding me as far as like running with me. Once that safety came out the middle of the field, I was just hoping. VA seen it. <laughs> they got him. They got him on blitz, and he and Whitehead was right up the middle of the field. No one covered him. And it was crunch time football, man. We needed somebody, somebody to make a play. Have him be me. Makes it second and ten. Lions bring four play deep zone. Dola Gala goes under the middle. Oh! LaCombo is bearing down on Stearns. Here we go, baby. I honestly thought we'd be kicking a field goal on the last play of the game. That's just kind of the way I felt about how the whole thing was going. And we came within about uh, 30 yards of, of that happening. And um, 
and didn't get it done. Side by Zell in the backfield. Now he motions out, empty set, four-man rush. Break down the cut. Hatcher makes the catch at the 50. To be honest, man, that's probably one of my uh, one of my hardest losses um, for me personally. Um, end of the game, I had a chance to, you know, ice the game. Ball's in the middle of the field. Here they come with the blitz. Adams Jr. drops back, goes in zone. Hatcher! Touchdown! No! Oh, in and out of his hands on the corner row. I didn't make the play, you know, um, and that, that one hurt me a little bit. But I always got to bounce back, you know, so that, um, that loss, that was a tough one. That was a tough one for sure. Losing sucks, period, you know. Yeah, it's crazy because you don't want to lose when you're coming back like that and you're that close, you know, um, just a couple plays off, you know, and we, we could have went up and, and took the win there. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders have hung on to defeat the BC Lions 34 to 29. The thing I learned today is we got the right people in the room because you played your ass off to the end and you fought back, which is that is the biggest trait you can have, is to not give up and fight all the way to the end. I thought we were going to be kicking a field goal in the last play of the game, and it didn't happen. Our job as a football team, the way we can improve, is when people get our best for 60 minutes, we're going to give people all kinds of problems. I don't think we gave them all 60 minutes today. We, we gave it for a stretch. And it was almost enough. That we gotta love each other through everything, man. The good and the bad and the, mm -hmm. the fighting and shit, man. Let's get rid of that, man. Yeah. Let's get rid of that. Let's have solutions, man. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's go to work. It's all about work. All right? Work on three. One, two, three. Work. Ticats come in, uh, had a, they're in a bit of a lull, as they say. Uh, what are your thoughts about facing another team that is in a bit of a lull? Yeah, the, the thing when you watch film in this league is every team is capable. Obviously, there's some teams that don't have the record they want, but there's no bad team where you throw on the film and say, well, these guys just don't look good or they don't have good players. That's not the case. What does the film say on uh, Mr. James Butler? He's, man, he looks good. Looks like James Butler to me. You know, we, we liked him here for a reason, and he looks like he hasn't missed a beat and um, always seems to get yards after contact. And uh... Talking about James Butler playing against his old team, he has, what, 520 yards on the season? He'll probably need that today for these for the Hamilton Tiger Cats to have an opportunity to win this game. Lions and the Tiger Cats today at Savon Foods Field at BC Play Stadium. It's the Moach, Bob Arjanovich, along with Julio Caravetta. How are you feeling today, fellas? Great, great. Man. Mental Bless, good. Man. Body Bless, feeling good. Yeah. It's a new week, new day. Hey, I don't know who's going to go crazy. I know the motherfucker's going to ride behind them. One thing y'all know, man, we do things brothers, we do things family. Uh, celebrate each other's success. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Catch everything that come your way. Get in the end zone. Let's dance and have fun tonight, man. I love y'all boys, man. I'm so proud, man, just to be a part of this group, man. I love y'all to the bottom of my heart, man. And I just, I love to see y'all shine. Come on. Playmakers on three. One, two, three. Playmakers. JB definitely had a chip on his shoulder. I know uh, he he was up for this game, uh, not so much to you know uh, you know hurt his former teammates or, but he definitely wanted to prove a point. Butler in the backfield, break behind Taylor Powell, and uh, Butler far side avoids one tackle, crosses the 25 all the way up to the 30. The delayed draw, Butler spins off one defender and he gets close to the 50 yard line. Butler. Tries to go up the middle, Lacumbo wraps him up and he keeps his feet going, but... Honestly, I don't know, that one was a surprise. That one was a surprise. The way they came in our house, they were more physical than us. They had a better they had a better game plan. You know, even the way like James Butler was playing, he was playing lights out, he had something to prove. Butler takes the snap, right side, hurdles into the end zone! Touchdown, Hamilton! So, the Tiger Cats strike first on a one-yard rush by... James Butler, they take a 6 nothing lead. As we, we just didn't come out fired up. Something was missing that game. And, uh... Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! My concerns at that point were, was our level of intensity just was not there. Like, if you look at the game when we beat Winnipeg in Winnipeg, uh, our level of intensity was so high that regardless of what Winnipeg did, we were dictating to them. 
the biggest adjustment we can make going into the second half is to play with great energy. Hustle onto the field, hustle off the field. I'm y'all brother, I love y'all. I ain't gonna never lie to y'all. Y'all playing with no fucking energy, no heart, no effort. You playing like a bitch. Tighten mm. the fuck up. This your fucking house. Hell, bro. Don't let it say shit in your fucking house. You run this bitch. Lions with a six-man front come with the heat. Powell's gonna swing it out to Butler in the left flat. Butler race to the end zone. And they're gonna call him out of bounds at about the BC4. He stepped out of bounds. But they're calling it a touchdown for the Tiger Cats. It was just, we just couldn't, we just couldn't stop the run, man. And uh, they had a good plan. And what Hamilton it? making it look very easy right now. Oh my gosh, they certainly are. James Butler's second touchdown of the game has given the Tiger Cats a 17-6 lead with 5.15 left to go in the third quarter at BC Place Stadium. You can not have your best game and get a win and be like, okay, we can go back to the drawing board. But if you have a good game and you, you know what I'm saying, you have a loss, there's still no happiness. I mean, yeah, you had a good game, but you, you didn't come up with the victory. So um, it's kind of the, it's a very gray area in that, in that uh, aspect. But, you know, always, always want the victory in the end over the performance. I was concerned that our level of intensity had gotten away and uh, we needed to find it somehow. You know, not only match intensity with the other teams, but just bring it up a notch. And uh, that Hamilton game, we just did not have it. And we had all the reason to have it. And uh, for whatever reason, we just didn't have it that game. And that's the ball game. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have come into Vancouver and stunned the BC Lions by a score of 30-13 to 13 this Saturday. Just one of those days in which the BC Lions just came out flat, didn't have any energy, couldn't find anything on the field to get them. That one bothered me. That's the first time I've been bothered this year. And the reason I'm bothered by it is I don't think we match their energy level that whole night. I don't know why, because it's so uncharacteristic of this group. That's your calling card is your energy, your positivity, your fun playing together, all that stuff. So I'm gonna chalk it up to a uh, anomaly in that it didn't happen. So when you sign up to play this game, if you want to feel all the good stuff, the wins and the happiness and all that stuff, you sign up for the this, this, this part of it too. This is a very good football team that was not a good football team today. I think we can all agree on that. So let's get back to work tomorrow. No one's going to feel sorry for us and, uh, and onward we go. We might as well be at the crib. We got the all black on. I felt like the organization kind of gave up on me. The Lions go down big. As he walked on the field, I'm like, oh, we have a chance. He's, He's going to go. score! Terry Williams! Touchdown! Yeah. Are you kidding me? The golf tournament's a fun day. We're here to win. We didn't let Trey Ford go anywhere. I think it gave him a, a huge boost and rightly so put him in that conversation for him up being.